nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Command engine start. Two, one, zero. as well as New Shepard's first ever art installation. You can see on your screen, we're gaining speed as New Shepard lifts off towards space. In about 10 seconds here, we'll be coming up on max Q, which is the toughest point of flight for the vehicle itself. Look at her go. And we have successfully punched through max Q where the aerodynamic stresses on the vehicle were at the maximum. Such a beautiful clean burn on that BE3 engine and you see the West Texas desert disappearing away. As you can see on your screen, that altitude monitor and that velocity are on the bottom. She is really picking up speed on her way to space. Keep an eye out shortly for that main engine cutoff where we'll cut off that BE3 engine. New Shepard is now coasting at over 1,700 miles per hour. And there we have it, main engine cutoff. New Shepard is at 2,000 miles per hour, and those experiments are just seconds away from getting their several minutes of microgravity and performing their research. There is that zero G indicator on the screen. Shortly, you'll start to see those two distinct crafts as the booster starts heading back towards Earth and those experiments in the capsule start performing their science. At this point in flight, if there were humans flying in that capsule, they'd be getting up out of their seats, floating around. I know I can't wait for that and Kaya definitely can't wait for that. And super importantly for today, those payloads on board are experiencing three to four minutes of clean microgravity. Science is collecting its data and that booster with its NASA lunar landing sensors are getting ready to come back for a precision landing in the West Texas desert. Well, we just received confirmation of Apogee for the crew capsule. That Apogee is over that Kármán line, the internationally recognized line of space, and that's the highest point the crew capsule will travel today. You can now see that booster is headed back from space for the eighth time, and those lunar landing sensors are really going to work at this point as the booster make it, makes its way back to the pad for a precise landing in West Texas.
Shortly, the booster itself is going to reach its atmospheric pierce point. And what that means is it's when the rocket is returning from space and re-entering that atmosphere. So those fins and those control surfaces on the fins will start to have air pressure push against them. Those wedge and ring fins are really going to work here, really important parts of the new Shepard design as that booster makes its way back to the landing pad, which is just two miles north of where that vehicle took off. You can see those two beautiful distinct crafts in the middle of your screen. That West Texas desert is starting to come into focus here on the right side of your screen. Those drag brakes will be deploying shortly. As we discussed, the booster will be reaching its maximum reentry velocity soon, which is just under Mach 4. That booster shape causes a lot less drag than the crew capsule, so the booster will win this race back to Earth. There go those drag brakes. This is a critical step in slowing the booster down on its approach. You see this velocity decreasing quite rapidly on the left side of your screen. Those in West Texas are now hearing that sonic boom. New Shepard is on approach. That BE-3 engine relay confirmed. Landing gear deployed. That beautiful hover. And booster touchdown, look at that, just like she was landing on the moon. Hopefully those NASA landing sensors got some incredible data today. I have to tell you, I'm often asked if that is slow-mo or CGI. It definitely is not, I can assure you that. Look at her there on the pad after her eighth trip to space for that booster. It just never gets old, Jackie. It never it's does. such a beautiful flight. We have reacquired the crew capsule there in the minute in the middle of your screen. Shortly, those initial drogue parachutes will deploy, which slow down the capsule on its return. So excited to see those experiments in there on their way back. There go the drogues. That capsule speed will slow, and the main parachutes will follow shortly here. And there go the mains further slowing the crew capsule here on its way back to the West Texas desert. They'll start to completely inflate here and that West Texas landscape will come into the view in your background. You can see how substantially that velocity of the capsule has slowed at this point. Do keep in mind as we approach the desert here, that West Texas dust uh, does kick up a lot. Oh my gosh, you can see that beautiful capsule with the landed booster in the background there. Our retro thrust system in the base of the crew capsule will kick up a tremendous amount of dust as it fires for that nice soft landing. Rest assured the payloads will enjoy quite a soft touchdown in just a few seconds here. That shot is incredible. Yeah. 
200 feet from the surface. And touchdown of the crew capsule, another beautiful launch and landing for New Shepard. Huge, enormous congratulations to Team Blue. Congratulations to our friends at NASA, especially in the flight opportunities and tipping point programs. And congrats to all of the customers who flew with us today. Just another beautiful flight. I cannot wait to see our next crew flight as well coming up really soon. So everything looks to have gone so well. Uh, let's take a look at some of the unofficial stats. And those stats are still coming in, so bear with us just a minute. Here they are. All right, so our maximum ascent velocity, we went to 2,229 miles per hour. Our crew capsule Apogee, the highest point that it reached was 347,430 feet. Our mission start time was at 9.31 a.m. Central Time. Thanks everyone for the patience on the holds, but as you can see, it always pays off. And our mission elapsed time was 10 minutes and 38 seconds.